Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just trying to. What's going on over there? Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I'm trying to put the the. Are we doing the robot? No. Mm -mm. Let's do no, that. No, I was trying to. I was always very bad at that. No, I was just trying to get the the Center. columns centered it so it looks. I'm not quite sure that matters, Douglas. Good morning, good morning. Do my best to make it aesthetic. I love easy. ya. Good morning. People are. Some people are probably like, "Wow, that's a lot." Good morning, for Tim. 30. A lot of what? You. That's a, lot a lot of me. Of me. That's a lot of somebody at 6:30 in the morning. Uh, so won't apologize for it. It's just it is what it is. Indeed. It just is what it is, friends. That sounds like an old school preacher. Just is what it is. You know, today yes, we've got a good right. message for you today. We've got a real good message. It's kind of opposite of what people teach most times, right? What if I just did talk like this? Just talk like this. all It's like a Saturday Night Live character. In that just, special. You know, you can quit. You can quit. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do the whole thing like that. <laughs> good morning. <clears throat> By the way. We are Doug and Heidi McGurk, and this is Love and Success, where we give you the tips, the tools, the strategies, the breakthroughs that you need in order to have the relationships and business you deserve. Why? Because you get to have it all. Ding! All right, so <laughs> welcome to today's episode called You Can Quit. Now, that doesn't seem very motivational, Douglas. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Why would anybody tell somebody it's okay to quit? Who would do something so irresponsible? Well, somebody, I'll tell you who needs That's to hear it. That's just crazy. I'll tell you who needs to hear it. Actually, I was a person that needed to hear that in my life many times over because for whatever reason, I was hardwired to stay loyal when loyalty wasn't deserved. I was hardwired to be a person that knew how to survive uh, mm -hmm. in a, in kind of a crap storm and get the umbrella and know how to like this boat sinking. I'll get the oars, you know, I'll, I'll carry it through and would stay way too long. And for somebody like me who had a problem staying loyal, staying in it long after I should have gotten out, my challenge was actually giving myself permission to walk, to quit. Because for somehow I thought I didn't have permission to disappoint other people, even though I was making myself miserable in the process. Yeah. So you can quit. And well, and all that stems from from fear. I, uh, I remember years ago in my music career, the uh, and so interesting. I, I we were with a company, and again, I think I've shared this story. The peak of my career was when Napster came out. Um, that but, wasn't good for it. No, but. <laughs> The uh, while all this was happening and the technology was happening and so forth, the the company, the producer that I was working with, where we made all these big records, the company was struggling. The record company was shutting down. There's all this stuff, and and I knew that it was it was time to leave. Yeah. And I took it. It took a while it, because I was afraid. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, at least here I'm getting you know, like I'm getting steady work. I'm getting all of that, even though it's miserable. Like the fear is, what's it going to be like out there? And and um, a good friend of mine ended up staying like for basically till he went down with the ship. Yeah. And he ended up basically being super resentful about it. Lost a lot of money because all the money that they owed, they they didn't pay him. And and it's just it's one of those challenges. But I remember when I left, how how quickly things turned around and I got like, I, yeah. I, what I was afraid of didn't happen. What, what I was really hoping for and wanting to do because I went out and, and took the actions, but my career for that brief period, like right after Napster did do really, really well. Um, but then the whole industry got, you know, hammered, but that's, that's normal. So you could, you don't have to beat yourself up about it. If you're in that position where you're like, ah, this isn't working, but what if, you know, Oh man, what's it going to be like without it? Mm -hmm. It ends up being even better. And you know, I, I've had things in my life. What's that in the back? We look like Sanford and Son. That's my briefcase. <laughs> okay, my I guess it's not briefcase. quite Sanford and Son, but I, I kind of, you know, was around in a house like from for like that was like not really a hoarder house, but definitely had like a lot of crap everywhere. So I'm really weird about having stuff. Good morning, Deb. <laughs> I'm kind of like anal about having stuff around like clutter. Uh, wow, I lost my train of thought. Hmm, who would have thought that would have ever happened? 
Squirrel. Happens every day now that I'm aging. Oh, I like Is it. Is that why? No, it's because I'm blonde. Like the abs. No. You're not blonde. Douglas, <laughs> come on, do not, do not test the integrity of the hair. I, do you need me to break out the baby pictures? Do you need me to break out the pictures when I was ten? And then everybody goes, everybody was blonde when they were ten. Okay. Uh, anyway, I wasn't. Um, no, it's because I'm like the absent-minded professor, and the reason I'm so absent-minded is because I'm a genius, and I only have rooms for so much mm. stuff in there. And so. Is that how genius works? <laughs> Look at Einstein's desk. I never seen it. Me neither. But I imagine <laughs> that it was probably pretty messy because of his. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the other thing is, you can quit, and 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 you can quit by like not quitting totally, but just by pivoting. Uh, I'll tell you what, what I mean. Bless you, baby. I had a conversation with a client uh, not too long ago that was having one strategy in her business, and she has like a thing she really wants to do, right? She wants to get her message out to the world, but she was doing it kind of like with everybody's strategy that we learned about, right? Well, social media is the thing today, and so she was in there, and she was building it and really getting some traction and acquiring clients, and she was actually having results with it. So it wasn't a case of like, oh, I'm not seeing the results. I don't want to, I don't want to do, th do this. It wasn't like perseverance needed to win there. It was more like, ooh, I hate this. There's nothing about this that I'm enjoying. It mm. feels like a chore. I don't love it. I feel overwhelmed. It makes me anxious to think about it. And so does that mean that I say, oh, I don't want to be in business anymore? Or does that mean I say, well, let's think of a new way. Quit that, right? You have permission to quit that and do a new thing that is more suited for you. You know, lots of businesses are still being built offline, believe it or not. And if, and, and a lot of my businesses about referrals and knowing people, and we do this more as a service, right? More it's as a also, way to prime the pump, but yeah, for really, us to prime our pump too, to keep, to keep ourselves offline. sharp. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. Um, and so there's other things too, that the other message is, you know, you don't have to quit. You can quit. You can quit, quit. You can pivot, quit. Right. Or the last thing is you don't have to, you can quit, but you don't have to do it like everybody else. So th this reminds me of when I wanted to quit drinking mm. and uh, I didn't know if I could quit. Like there was a part of me that knew that I could quit because I had tried many times before to be like, oh, I'm just going to slow down. I'm just going to not going to pregame. I'm just going to not drink shots. I'm just going to drink wine. You know, I had done all these conversations around trying to drink successfully for a long time. I want to be a successful alcoholic. You, know? you got to have goals. A successful binge yeah. drinker. Right. So, but at the time, I didn't really want to claim that identity of, of alcoholic. To me, I, I had been doing so much self-help work that for me, it was like I knew I had a drinking problem for sure. Like I knew it was affecting my life. It was clouding my relationships. It was leaving me with poor judgment. That binge drinking, like even one night waking up with shame is too many mornings spent, right? So I was like, oh, I really want to quit. But everybody else was saying, well, this is the way you need to do that. And because I didn't line up with the traditional methods of the way to do it, I started to question, well, can I really do this? Can I really quit? Can I really walk away? Because I'm not going to do it like everybody else is doing it. So what you did was you pivoted your strategies because the outcome was I need happiness yeah. was on the other side of mm -hmm. quitting, which mm -hmm. was the happiness, the peace, the bliss, the joy, the freedom, and so forth. So you were shared by traditional methods, this is the way you do it, or this is on the way other people have done it. And, and other people are really committed, Doug. They had said to me, if you don't do it this way, you're not gonna do it. You know? And so based, I actually on, their stopped, based the world, on their model of the world. Yeah. So I actually stopped telling people that I was doing it. Right. Because I didn't want the feedback. And so, you know, 10 years later, I guess nine years later, because we'll be together for 10 years mm -hmm. this coming uh, fall, but nine years later, it's still working, right? But at the time, I didn't necessarily, I was like, oh, okay, it's, it's good. I, sometimes when you're doing a new thing in your own life and you're trying to quit something, you know, it, sometimes it's helpful to tell a lot of people around you to rally a lot of support. And sometimes- You also get, yeah, some accountability. Some accountability. Yeah. And, but it's more important to make sure that you're telling the right people. Right, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're There's telling a strategy, a yeah. <laughs> so, it's not just about shouting it from the rooftops mm -hmm. necessarily all the time. It's about being sure you're like strategically aligned with the people who are going to believe in you, support you. And, you know, because sometimes when you just do that blanket announcement, 
-hmm. you'll also have people going, oh, really? Oh, and have uh, people going, ooh, get the popcorn. Can't wait for you to fail. Unfortunately, that's the truth. You do have people in our, in our lives that, that are waiting for us to fail. The other thing is you can quit the relationship. You know, I, you, you feels like you can't because you keep getting sucked back in over and over again. feels like you keep on going back in and, and you keep falling for the same old tricks over and over again. But maybe the strategy that you're applying is not working. So sometimes it's not about, I just can't quit. I just can't do the thing I want to do. Or so it's twofold. It's giving yourself permission to quit. That's missing that you're, you're telling yourself a story about your loyalty or about they'll change or about it'll magically get different or I call that toxic positivity. Well, it's, and it's really important that you have a, a, an outcome in mind, a goal in mind, that it's not just quitting because you can't handle whatever's going on exclusively. You, you have to know what's on the, right. You right. need what's on the other side. But it's toxic. The right. It's not working for you. The job environment, the relationship environment, the thing you're doing, the behavior is toxic and you need to get out of that behavior, then that's the reason to quit, right? That's the reason to throw in the towel. Um, trying to drink successfully or be in a toxic relationship successfully or be in a shit job successfully is toxic positivity. I just know it's gonna turn around. I'm just, I just got my affirmations on the way into work. Day. I just, I just, oh, um, you know, honey, it, it's not gonna change, okay? So that toxic positivity, we use our skills as a weapon, right? And, and so you can quit, you give yourself permission. The other side of that is give yourself a new strategy. It's not that you're, you're not able to quit. It's that the strategy that you're using is not working. You know, Doug and I have really spent our lifetime kind of being the champion for the misfit, right? Jason sending lots of love. What's up, oh, Jason? Hey, Jason. Love you, brother. Uh, he, we got to catch up. Man. Yeah, I love Brilliant him. man right there. You guys, you want to also connect to the bald Avenger for, uh, he's, for he's stuff. Really, yeah. You know, listen, he's, he's talking he's about deal. somebody that's like, not afraid to say it or be controversial or like he's inspiring you're inspiring jason in many ways that way that you just you don't car you do it right yeah. <laughs> you just say what you need to say and i love that about you um but doug and i have really dedicated our lives to kind of making you know letting everybody find their own unique path in the world their own way everybody has what's called their own dao right tao um, you know, the Tao Te Ching is about the way and everybody has their own unique way uh, or Tao. And so the point is when you line up your nature with the nature of the universe, that's when that magic happens and you figure out what your unique path is and really live into it. This book um, under construction, uh, navigating the road detours on the road to recovery, you can get it on Amazon still. It's Doug's uh, first book, our first book in the series that we're doing. And if you have gotten it, please leave a review. But in this book is really dedicated to the non-traditional ways to recover from addictions and addicted to what? Anything addicted to patterns, addicted to victimhood, addicted to depression, addicted to the anxiety pattern, addicted to toxic relationships, addicted to drugs and alcohol. We have become a nation addicted, addicted. to the story, addicted to the victimhood, a victim to the states that we're in. Even yeah. like we just get sucked into. We get you heard it, rageaholic and workaholic, and all of these. They're they're real. And this is a new way to quit. <laughs> and in one way so that you can commit to yourself, commit to your happiness, commit to your love, to commit to having the love you deserve, commit to having the success that you deserve. And so this is a path. There are many, many roads to Rome, right? But, but consider First you gotta this. know you wanna get to Rome. Consider this, if you know you wanna get to Rome and you know you need to get to Rome and you've been trying and you've been beating your head against the wall and saying, I just can't quit the thing that's self-destructive. I just can't quit the thing that's holding me back. Consider a new path. Consider a new way, because because there are other people like me and like Doug who wanted the same thing and didn't have a way either, so we made one, right? Actually, uh, on a side note, I know you're going to say something I don't want you to forget, yeah. but um, look, I'm not a fancy person at all. In fact, I'm like tech tarted. I know that's not uh, like a, a good word to use because people get offended, but you could say again, that. Jason's on here. Just give me power. I don't care. <laughs> um, so if the worst thing I say is tech tart, and Jason's like, okay, girl, you need to step up your game. But, you know, you I, cuss I, before it. I did figure out how to put one of those fancy countdown timers on my website uh, for my program that's starting <laughs> in September. You guys would be so impressed with my skills. It literally is like counting down, right? So, and, and, of course, that's to make you nervous that you're going to miss out, right, on the thing that I'm doing. But I do want you to check it out. 
because when Sharing I was trying, how the hot dog is made. No, when I was trying to recover from toxic relationships and toxic dysfunctional behavior and self-destructive behavior, the way that I created is actually my program called Life School, which is Love Yourself First Empowerment School, and that is my secret sauce, my secret weapon to over overcoming every single obstacle when it comes to toxic or dysfunctional behavior, and for you to really become on. Right. And that's that's the ultimate outcome. Right. Get crystal clear on what you want. And so that program is starting the first week of September. I think the countdown says like 19 or 18 days. The pressure is on. OK. But if you want to enroll or check out that program, go to lovecoachheidi.com and send me a message because it's still an application process. Right. And not because I want to like you know, make you have to work for it, but I do want to make sure it's a good fit because I really want you to be able to be successful if you're in it. So I want to make sure it's right for you. Um, but yeah, check that out. I'm so excited about it. So I was going to share the road to Rome, remind me of a, a cool story um, that, uh, do you know why train tracks are three and a half feet wide? Why Douglas? Well, so back in the olden days, in Roman <laughs> days, uh, when all roads, in fact, did lead to Rome, uh -huh. they had chariots, mm -hmm. and they I were. I feel like about... I should be driving in a chariot. Sure. Yeah. This Today. Be fun. Yeah, you're definitely just, just yes. appropriately. Um, so they had the the chariots. The roads were basically wide enough for a horse and a chariot to to do that, and that's what the divots were. And that became the average size of all things with wheels and so forth. So when we started doing trains, we started kind of going, okay, well, what is the, the, the best size? And we were so used to, so conditioned to that width of being that. And even old time cars have a, you know, they're, they're narrower. So the truth is, is that when we had to move the, uh, the space shuttle, uh, we had to go through a mountain. It was about as wide as uh, you know the the width of like two horses. So the the size of the train tracks and what it took to move the space shuttle was about the size of two horses' asses. This is a true story. You're welcome, <laughs> Charlie. What's up, brother? Charlie's in with you. He's like, if they were four feet wide, the train wouldn't stay on them. Thing. Okay. Well, Jason says, uh, <laughs> and Charlie yeah. says something else that you scrolled past. Oh, sorry. Charlie said, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Eric said, uh, I've been seeing people addicted or complacent being in rehab after rehab. Never want to get out of the cycle. A hundred percent, brother. That is something we saw all the time. And people were addicted to rehab, by the way. Because drugs yeah. and alcohol are a lame attempt at connection, all right? People can't bond to people the way that they want to. They bond to a substance instead, and that creates this illusion of connectivity. And so when people would come into treatment, they would have, for the first time, connection, real genuine connection, affection, attention, and they get addicted to the love and connection. And so it's not that they get addicted to treatment necessarily. They get addicted to love and connection, but they don't know how to create it outside of the treatment because they go home and they go, what the fuck? Nobody's here for me. Crickets. Same old friends want to drag me down again. And so when we talk about recovery and we talk about getting people a life worth being sober for, one of those main aspects is creating divine connections, mm -hmm. right? Uh, inspiring relationships. And uh, that was really right. what inspired me to really focus more on, you know, loving yourself so that you can uh, love other people because you're not going to have that until you fully love yourself. And speaking of uh, that divine connection, there's double D. We got some. Book uh, stands on its own. Yeah. It does. It does if you if you level it, you get, it's got to be on something. Uh, is outstanding as as well as a self help book. Pages one hundred to one hundred and one portray how to live your best life. Rock on, Doug. Keep driving that train. Can mm -hmm. I tell you something? You're so lucky that you have friends like this. Not only is David just like a good solid human being, but he also is like a guy that's very generous with his own. This is why we need friends like this in our lives, right? This is why you surround, you become the people you surround yourself with. And David uh, is a real estate genius and has been for 
decades. Yeah. Okay. And when you met him, he poured his love and, and time into us and has helped us build our real estate, mm -hmm. has helped us go in properties and say, oh, that's a good one. That's a bad one. This is and learn the real estate game that now you're really getting better and better and better at. And I just want to love you publicly, David, because I appreciate you. You know, coming alongside of our family and helping us and pouring love into us and your time and attention. And it's people like that that you become the people. So we're all a representation of that coming here, pouring the love into you. And you're going to leave this live today, whoever you are that I'm talking to now, right? All of you. And you're going to go and pour your love into the next person because you've got an infusion. It's easy to pour love out when you get an infusion of love from the people who really care about you and connect with you. Yeah. Right. When you're intentional about your relationships and you're intentional about your interactions with people and you're intentional about quitting the interactions that suck you dry, that leave you feeling empty and depleted, that don't give you what you need to sustain you, that are taking from you. You can quit those things. Don't be toxic. Don't have toxic positivity. I'm just going to manifest it. <laughs> no, don't. OK, there comes a time where that's appropriate. But you know it's not appropriate if you keep on believing something that is like, you know, it's just ain't going to happen. Those meditations I can help need you find to be out. congruent. I can help you figure it out because nine times out of ten, you just don't know. It's a toxic positive. Can this person change? Am I delusional? Will this thing turn around? You need sometimes to have somebody come alongside you and help you know for sure. And it's that conscious choice of create the outcome, the kind of life you want to experience, what kind of rock star in your world are you going to be? then consciously choose those people that, that you're going you to for success. Yeah, that are going to be around. And then when you're doing your meditations, when you're doing those things, you now have more in energy, more infusion of that. So you can attract even more. Yeah. Now the challenge is that sometimes is doing that, starting that process when you are not surrounded by those people yet. Um, what Heidi's sharing is quit the addiction to settling, to allowing yourself to be people like pleasing. people pleasing, infused with that negativity and not toxic positivity because you also have that. You'll also have the Pollyannas, which is definitely a better place to be in some sense. And you still need to be pragmatic on some level like you know you have to you know tony uses the example you know be if you want to see a, a sunset and you're headed east you're going the wrong way so you you do have to be logical and pragmatic and the magic lies in the faith behind it the faith of, of well, that's a good place to go get ellie today to say good morning i don't know what she's going to do guys probably bring in some toy and tell you about it indeed this kids today is a 1970s goddess dress. I went through a phase where I was like addicted to these dresses and I would get them on eBay. Aren't they cool? I think. And also, we got, remember, we got a, a few of those. I remember which ones at that thrift store in, uh, in Chicago. I think in the 70s, they used these as bridesmaid dresses back in the day, but I think it's cool. Hey, Ellie. Kids Wanna today. Good morning. Uh, here comes Ellie. She wants to say good morning. Let's see real quickly. Dr. Barbie? Yeah, because she's Justin left his company, big move, but he was unhappy stayed, and, and it was the right move. Oh, who's this? Look at this. Who's that with you, Ellie? Hibachi. Hibachi? Is that Shibaka? Or Hibachi, which is delicious. Do you so, want to say anything to your friends this morning? Tell me you love him. Okay. What does Chewbacca say? <laughs> That's a good one. So, so do you want to do the end of our video? <laughs> Honey, do you want to do the end of our video and say the special thing? Believe in yourself. Mm. Anything else? Click the subscribe button. Wait. If you Do we feel like we're like, like training her? Yeah, like yes. pumping her out a little there bit. You you talk Give about her the book. Too? Really yeah, go yeah, for here, it. We're gonna time. do that. Let's yeah. like be those parents that no, we're like making her have the book. Okay, okay, you go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talk about that book. Girl, get some book sales. Yeah. Let me tell you, this is a secret book. It's, it's a not secret. secret. Well, no, people oh, like okay. secrets. Oh, okay. One, it's a secret. One, one. She's doing good marketing. One, 
two, three count with me. One, two. Okay, say good. Okay. All right, we don't have time for all that this morning, so we're just going to do the ending part. Do you want to say goodbye? Well, goodbye, and, 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 and come back again for YouTube channel, and we'll see you again when Lex channel comes back for the fair. Well, Bye. we'll see you tomorrow, actually, because we see them every day. And, and raspberries. Nice? Okay. I food. That's, well. What? I farted. You sure about that? <laughs> That's not That's the so nicest silly. thing to do on camera, but I guess it's, worst so it's authentic. All right. Okay, so we love you. Have we a love great you day. for who you are and who you aren't. And anything Bye. else, Ellie? Have a great day. Any pose? Do you want to do your pose? Okay, okay. guess not. Say, say bye bye. All right, we love you. See you tomorrow.